Hey friends, today we're going to be looking at a verse out of Isaiah chapter 45, where God says, command ye me the works of my hands. And that's in the King James Version. So we're going to look at that verse in its context and see if we can figure out what it means. And one of the ways that we're going to go about doing that is by looking at two clips by people on YouTube who are teaching about that verse. So we'll look at the way that they are teaching it, and then we'll look at it in its context to see if we can figure out what it rightly means. And while we do that, we'll also learn a little bit about how we use discernment as believers. But before we get to that, hello friends, my name is Matt. Welcome to my channel. If you could please take a second to subscribe, I would greatly appreciate it. All right, our first clip is coming from a lady named Karen Lecky. I don't know much about her other than the fact that she has a YouTube channel, so let's go ahead and get into her clip. So I'll read to you Isaiah 45, 11. Thus says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, and his maker, so it's speaking about Jesus and the Father God, his maker. It says, ask me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands, you command me. We as believers, through laying on of hands and commanding, we are to command God's power. That's why it's so powerful to understand the truth of this verse. We're not praying to God and saying, oh my goodness, God, come down with your lightning bolts of power and come into our situation. He is saying, I've given you the full authority and power. You command the power now. I Okay, so we are going to get to the verse in Isaiah chapter 45, but as I said, we're going to learn some things about discernment as we go. One of the things that I want to point out is that false teaching often accompanies false teaching. Now, any person who has been teaching or preaching Christian doctrine for long enough has probably at some point said something that is incorrect or something that they would now disagree with, or maybe they worded something the wrong way. I know that I've uh, preached a lot of sermons, and there have been times where I look back later and say, ooh, I wish I would have worded that differently. And so uh, certainly I believe we should have grace for people to understand that we are fallible beings and we learn and develop and progress. So I'm not saying that if anybody ever says one thing wrong, you cast them aside. They are a false teacher. Certainly there is uh, some wisdom and discernment that we need to use with that. How egregious is the bad teaching and how frequently is it taking place? But one of the things that will help you to know that you are listening to somebody who is not rightly handling God's word is when it's not just one bad teaching, it's a bad teaching followed by a bad teaching followed by a bad teaching, etc. And so I bring that up to actually get us to the beginning of that clip where Karen said, that God the Father made Jesus. And she was referencing Isaiah chapter 45 when she did so. So she said that God the Father made Jesus. Friends, that is heresy. I mean, this isn't just bad teaching. This is heresy. In fact, if you've heard about uh, the Council of Nicaea, the Nicene Council, uh, this is one of the issues that they were addressing there. And Arius was excommunicated from the church as a heretic for this exact doctrine. Friends, Jesus is not a created or a made being. Jesus is eternally God. We go to John chapter 1 and look at just the first few verses. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Jesus existed in the beginning, and all things that have been created or made were made by him. So when you say, God the Father made Jesus, I, I have a really hard time saying, well, you probably just misspoke. I mean, it seems like that's exactly what she meant to say, and that is incredibly bad heresy. And we see that she followed that up with um, saying that believers, all believers, have the ability, and not only have the ability, but that we are supposed to command God's power. And this is where we get to, finally, our verse in Isaiah chapter 45. I'm going to look, uh, the verse itself is verse 11, but I'm going to look at verses 9 through 11, just so we can get some of the context of what is taking place here. Woe to him who strives with him who formed him, a pot among earthen pots. 
Does the clay say to him who forms it, what are you making? Or your work has no handles? Woe to him who says to a father, what are you begetting? Or to a woman, with what are you in labor? So we see here that this is a warning to people, you know, about the, the, the danger of speaking back to God and questioning him about what he is doing. So it's really, if you think about it, the context is rightly making a distinction between the uh, the potter and the clay, the, the creator and the creation, and making sure that the creation stays in its place. So think about that as the context as we get to verse 11. Thus says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, and the one who formed him, Ask me of things to come. Will you command me concerning my children and the work of my hands? So first thing I want to point out is look at the first part of verse 11. Thus says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, and the one who formed him. Now, Karen, when she taught this, she said uh, that phrase, the one who formed him, the him was referring to Jesus. No, friends, the him is referring to Israel. The Lord is the Holy One of Israel, and the Lord is the one who formed Israel, not who formed and made Jesus. So we see that she's off with that. But let's look now at the second half of the verse. Ask me of things to come. Will you command me concerning my children and the work of my hands? Friends, this is a rebuke from God to the people saying, are you really commanding me what to do? Are you really going to tell me what to do? Remember the context? I'm the creator you're the creation. Are you really going to command me and boss me around and tell me where I'm going wrong? You know, this is out of whack. This is out of order. When people teach falsely on this verse, they almost always go to the King James. If you look at numerous translations, now there there is a, a pretty big variety of ways that this verse has been translated. It's a more difficult one to translate, but the majority of them are going to say something and make it clear that this is a rebuke from God. This is not him telling the people to command him to do anything. That would go against the rest of scripture, so that clearly can't be the meaning. Rather, it is a rebuke for the people because they are trying to command God and trying to tell him what to do. So this is a problem. She also said uh, at the very end of that clip that God has given every believer his full authority. Now, what verse is she basing that off of? When you say that God has said that he has given believers his full authority, I mean, you would need to be able to point to a verse to show that. And friends, you won't be able to point to a verse that shows that. I have heard many people attempt to use ones, but every time it is used, it is not taken in context. I've heard people use the Great Commission where Jesus says, all authority has been given to me, therefore go and make disciples. He says all authority has been given to him. He doesn't say that he's giving it to other people. Or sometimes they'll look with the disciples where Jesus says to the apostles, I have given you authority to do these things. And they'll say, see, we have authority. It, yeah, Jesus was speaking to the apostles. He says, I have given you authority. Now, certainly, do we have uh, great blessings and benefits in Christ? We are indwelt by the Holy Spirit. Yes, but does that mean that we have God's authority? Friends, think about that. God has authority over all things. I mean, he He controls the weather. He controls sickness. He controls all these different things. I mean, do we have that sort of authority? Now, you will find people. Let me be clear. You will find people in Christian circles. I have to put air marks around uh, Christian. They will call themselves a Christian, and they will say, yes, as a believer, you have authority over the weather. Does anybody use that? Can anybody prove that? Can anybody demonstrate that? No, because it is not true. There is no verse that teaches this. God is the one who has all authority. And so remember, I'm saying, so I hope we have a good understanding now of Isaiah 45. We are not being told to command God to do certain things. Rather, it is a rebuke saying, don't do that. Trust in him. But not only that, I hope we'll see, again, false teaching normally accompanies false teaching. And so this is one of the ways that you can know, should I listen to this person? Take the time to assess the things that they are saying. Don't just blindly accept what you are being told when somebody says, you know, God has given you his full authority. Okay, where's the scripture that supports that? There is none. Okay, you're saying that this verse applies in this way. When I look at it in context, it does not apply that way. When you start seeing these patterns, then you know this is someone you should stay away from. All right, friends, we're going to look at one more clip. This is a really short one. We won't have much to say after, but I think this will also be helpful, in not only in our understanding of this verse, but also, again, with discernment. This one is from Rod Parsley. He is a very well-known megachurch pastor. I believe his church has over 10,000 weekly attendees. So let's go ahead and look at him teaching on this verse. God said, command ye me the works of my hands. 
God said, ask of me and I'll give you the heathen for an inheritance. If he'll give you this unsaved, doomed world for the kingdom of God, how much more? If you, being earthly fathers, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly father? Okay, I've already addressed the command ye me false teaching, but remember I said false teaching often accompanies more false teaching, and that is what we are going to see here once again. So Ron Parsley, after doing the whole command ye me thing, he said that God said that we should ask him and he would give us the heathen as an inheritance. Now this is a reference to Psalm chapter 2. In my translation, it's not going to say heathen, I think it's going to say um the nations, but we're going to see here, we're going to look at this like we're supposed to do. We're going to take the time to read it in its context and to see, is Psalm 2 telling us that God wants us to ask him to make the heathen, the nations, our inheritance? And in fact, it's a promise that he's going to make that our inheritance. Well, let's look. Let's start in verse 7. I will tell of the decree. The Lord said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage, and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron, and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. So verse 7 says, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Let me ask you, friends, who is God's son? The only begotten son. That's right, the Lord Jesus Christ. So verse 8 where it says, ask of me and I will make the nations your heritage and the ends of the earth your possession. He's speaking to Jesus. He's speaking to the only begotten son. He is not speaking to us. So Rod Parsley takes a passage of scripture that is speaking about Jesus and makes it about us. This is a big problem. And of course, this is coming from the man. I have a video actually on this, but uh, Rod Parsley, one of the people who said that Jesus is not the only begotten Son of God. See John 3.16. That would be incorrect as well. So he also, and this will be the last thing that we are going to look at because more false teaching coming along with it. He made a reference to Matthew 7.11, uh, which I'm going to read real quick. It says, If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask him? So, of course, friend, this, ver this verse is true, but the question is, what does it mean? And first, we really need to ask the question, how does this tie in with the command G me, that false teaching, that, what does that have to do with this? Well, it doesn't have anything to do with it. It's not related at all. But, yes, um, if we... Ask the Father, uh, he will give us good things. But did you even notice what I said? Look at the last couple words of this verse. He will give good things to those who ask him, not those who command him. When we pray, we are to ask God. We are to tell him what we need, and we are to, uh, to present our requests to him and let him answer. He is God, and we don't question the way that he answers. So friends, we are not to command God. We are not to tell him what to do. We are not supposed to uh, make decrees and declarations and whatever else you want to put on that. We make our requests to God. Make sure when you are listening to Christian teaching that you take the time to actually turn to scripture to see if what the people are telling you is correct. And if a person is talking really fast, like we saw in those clips, I mean, it was from one verse to the next to the next. If you need to, jot down some notes and go back and look at them later. Read in the context. Don't just read the one verse they gave you. Read a handful of verses before and after so you can see, okay, what's happening in this passage of Scripture? What does, what does God seem to be communicating here? And if you see, like we saw in our example in Isaiah 45, where it seems like he's really rebuking people who are trying to tell him what to do and question his way of doing things, then it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense that he's going to turn around and be like, by the way, tell me what to do, right? Like this will just really clear things up. And if you see that consistent pattern with someone, or if you find yourself constantly going, well, I don't know if that's right, but I think I know what they meant. If you have to constantly say, I think I know what they meant, that person cannot cr clearly communicate truth. So either they're a false teacher or maybe they actually don't mean the thing that they're saying, 
Um, but if they can't clearly communicate truth, then it's not somebody you should be listening to anyways, because it's not going to build you up because they can't communicate with you in a way that you can understand and you would need to listen to somebody else. So friends, I hope this clears some things up for you. I hope it is helpful to you in your Christian walk. If this is helpful to you and you want to grow in your Christian walk, you want to grow in discernment, your understanding of scripture, and you want to help get good Christian content out to other people on YouTube, please take a second to subscribe to my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks again for watching, guys, and until next time, God bless.